Hey, this is Derek. Welcome back to Cooking While Under Quarantine, or Quarantine Cooking with Derek Lipsky. Hey, so today is not going to be so much of a meal as it's going to be sort of uh, an appetizer I decided to do. So I'm going to make uh, homemade guacamole. This is a recipe that was handed down from my from the people from Mexico to my local Mexican restaurant to me who I watched a guy make it. Now, my recipe is a bit different. I don't like jalapenos in mine, and I definitely don't like tomatoes. So if you want those, you just add those in to this after you get done making what I'm making. Uh, chopped up tomatoes or chopped up you know, jalapenos if you want that. I don't like it spicy. So today what we're gonna need for this is all we're gonna need a couple ingredients. We're gonna need some fresh cilantro. Uh, and you're gonna buy a bunch. You only need half of this. You can save it for something else. Uh, a medium size to small size onion. You probably won't use the whole thing. Uh, three guacs, I'm sorry, three, three avocados and two limes. And then you need some coarse salt to put in there as well. Uh, we're gonna break it all up, throw it in there. This is gonna take literally four or five minutes. And you don't wanna make this too soon. If you're gonna have people over gonna make this, you wanna make this probably somewhere between 20 minutes and a half hour before you eat. If you let it sit too long, more than an hour or two, the onions will kind of get into the sauce and make it really oniony. Um, even if you don't use a little bit of onion, it still will get it, it'll permeate into that guac. Um, so you want to make it fresh because when you go to the restaurants to have it done for you, they make it fresh right there for you. You want to follow that same rule to keep it that fresh, crisp taste. So I'm going to put this on. This literally video should only take a couple minutes and you're going to have some of the best guac you've ever had. And again, you want to add diced tomatoes in there afterwards or jalapenos or whatever you want your heart desire you put in there, that's fine. This is the recipe that I use for me. This is the one I prefer myself. So we'll see you at step one, which is put, taking this stuff apart. Okay, so at step one, and obviously step one good for us is going to be to take the cilantro. Um, I took half of the bunch out. I washed it. Now I'm just going to chop it finely, right? So you can put this in a blender if you wanted to to get it really, really, really tiny. Um, I just kind of chop it up a bunch of times. I don't like it big at all and leaky in the guac. But if you just kind of finely chop it, and I think I may have picked the wrong knife for this. So this one's a little bit bigger and I can get that roll out of it. And I'm just trying to get it as fine as I can to release all those oils, that freshness and not have big clumps in the block. You know, nothing. It adds its own flavor, but no one wants to go take a big bite of uh, cilantro while they're eating guac. And that was step one. Step two, we'll take the limes. And I leave these out at room temperature because it's just easier to get the juice out of them uh, versus them being cold. There's the big chunk right there. And I have this little tool. Um, you don't have to use this. You can get some kind of whatever you use. This gets the seed, keeps the seeds from going inside there. And it lets all the juice drain in. And I like to do I like to do two of them because I like a really limey taste to my guac. You may uh, usually the restaurants they only do one. They only do two if you ask them. Well, I always ask. But you can see how much juice I'm getting out of this. And this is stopping the seeds from getting in there. And it's really juicy because they're warm. If they were cold, they would hold that water a bit more. I don't know if they hold it in the rind or where they hold it, but it would be in there a bit more. I never knew guac was so easy to make until I made it. I realized what it was. So... The next step is we're going to get the onion going. And based on the onion, I cut the ends off. I slice the first layer just barely. And I just peel it. And with this one, because I'm going to do it fine, I'll show you one of the techniques that I use to cut onions. You guys might have your own technique. This one's getting a hard time. But we get that first layer off so it's clean. I'm not making a mess here, but and I basically just want to do a, a cut about three quarters of the way down, close together, and 
And then I'm going to do another cut this way, turn around and do a crisscross. So north to south, and then east to west. And what this is going to do is give me even chunks of the onion. And then you can cut it as, you know, as coarse or as fine as you want it. And again, you have to use a sharp knife. If you, if you had a butt knife or anything even like that, it's going to be pushing this down, not cutting it. So I use a little more than a half. And those are, as you can see, those are really, it's uh, cut, they're cut in cubes, hard to see, I guess, but they're really finely done there. Um, still gives you a little bit of chunkiness. And then we get the actual avocados. And you can see we got them just right. You can tell when you feel it, it has to have that right thing, but when you look inside, I mean, that's like a commercial. There's no brown. Like, you know, I got these from Market Basket and they were green. Um, now they're at the point where you just feel them. They just have a tiny bit of give. You gotta, you know, sometimes when I go to show house, they, they're all black and you feel them and they're squishy. You're like, ugh. But these ones just have a tiny bit of give. So I knew it was time to make the guac when I felt them today. And again, you can see, just perfect. This is the perfect condition you want in terms of, uh, having that there. Then we're going to put some salt in. And uh, you, you know, you use your taste for what you want to put for salt in. A couple, a couple good shakes of that is it. Then what we're going to do is I'm going to put the guac in. I'm going to scoop them out. I'm going to show you the method I use. Uh, I only have small spoons here. Yes. Nope. It sounds like I should have prepped this a bit more before I did it, but I didn't know I was going to do this until I decided to say they were ready to go. So we're just going to scoop them out like this. You see how we just, almost like an ice cream scoop. They come right out, they fall out. It's really easy just to kind of scoop. I mean, almost the whole shell there is empty. It's really easy to take them all out. And again, when you catch them right, there's no brown spots. They just come really clean, come right out. Now, forget me out. The little trick for this is this. Take the knife, hit it once, twist it. Comes right out. Ugh. Take the knife, twist it, comes right out. An old trick for guac is too, is if you make guac and put it in the refrigerator and sometimes your fridge is going to turn gray, you know, it gets discolored. Uh, while it's in the fridge, you can put one pit in the finished guac just on top and it stops it from turning gray. I don't know. It's weird. Uh, so I'm going to get a fork. I'm going to take these next three out and I'm going to come back in a minute and take the fork and show you how we mush it in and finish the dish off. And we're back. And this is the final step. So basically we got everything in the bowl together. Now you want to do is just mix it up. And basically what you're trying to do is break up these chunks of avocado. Um, it looks a little watery. That's because of the lime juice. But it's all going to come together. And I just use the fork and I just push it against the bowl, basically, the side of the bowl. Really try to get that broken up. It's okay to have a little bit of chunks in there, but I like mine more smooth than chunky. Start doing this, it starts to take on that avocado, that guacamole look, you know. And the salt and the onion and the lime juice and the cilantro start to come together. And you get little chunks, not a lot, but little chunks of this. Again, this would be the point now. And this is ready to go. You don't wait for the setup or anything. I mean, it's ready to go. Um, this would be the point now that if you wanted to add the chopped tomatoes or the jalapenos 
or anything else to it, you would add it. Let you guys take a good look at the guac. It, that's how it came out. Take a quick taste. Oh. That's good. That's good guac. And it's healthy. I mean, that's healthy guac for you. So, that's my guac recipe. Like I said, today was more a, uh, an appetizer. We're going to have steak tips. And the same guy who gave me the recipe to this gave me the recipe for his... Uh, is Mexican steak, uh, marinade steak tip, but it's not my recipe. I can't, I'd, I'd show you today, but I can't give that away. But this is a great side dish, whether you're having um, homemade tacos, um, chicken, I mean, guac goes pretty much anything. Spread it on toast, you can do whatever you want with it. But again, you want to eat it within the first hour because it's so precious. If you wait too long, the onions will kind of start to overtake the entire dish. So I hope you guys like that. Uh, we have more stuff coming. Uh, I think tomorrow we're going to do chicken teriyaki with fried rice which will be a fun thing to make uh, and uh, leave any comments post any comments I try to answer any questions I have again this is Derek signing off I'll see you guys next time from my kitchen